an interesting box arrived in the mail today. Let's take a look inside. It's a single board computer called the Orange Pi Plus and uh, looks like it's got a few additional accessories um, that I ordered in addition to the single board computer. So let's take a look at the contents of this box. We've got a USB cable here, USB and breaks out to a uh, coaxial DC socket. This uh, looks like it's come with a single board computer and it's a good thing too because I believe this is how you supply power to the unit. This I ordered separately and uh, it's a cable to allow composite out and stereo from the computer. I also ordered this separately, so it's a SATA cable and power cable for connecting an external hard drive or SSD. And this is the last item that I ordered separately to the computer, and it's a small camera module designed for the Orange Pi as well. So, let's take a look at the last thing, the, the board itself, in this neat little box that it comes in here. Okay, here's the single board computer, all nicely wrapped in anti-static packaging, so that's a good sign right there. And a little getting started booklet here. And some warnings, instructions for safe use, and statements about EMC compliance, and so on and so forth. Okay, and here is the board out of its anti-static packaging. Uh, going around, immediately notice this little antenna here for the Wi-Fi connection, and that just clips on with one of these little coaxial connectors here and uh, around this side we've obviously got HDMI some kind of momentary push button there and a SATA connection power for the SATA hard drive as well the connection here for the uh, DC 5 volts to power it another push button micro USB B, sorry, micro SD for the SD card, micro SD card to boot this thing. Uh, USB on the go connector, I think. A 40 pin header connection here. An IR connection to do infrared remote control. And uh, camera connection here, I think. And uh, moving right along, we've got four USB connections, two to either side of this Ethernet connector here. And uh, then we've got the audio and analog video out here that uh, takes one of these kind of four pin tip ring ring sleeve type four pin plugs and that's about it a uh, couple of headers here and then the last thing is this tiny little microphone okay so taking a look at the top side of the board in the center here we've got the all winner system on a chip here it's marked h3 and uh, I believe this is a quad core at 1.6 gigahertz and uh, it's got some memory chips to either side of it there that gives uh, a gigabyte of memory. There is the Wi-Fi chipset here in a nice metal can as you'd hope and um, inspecting these little headers a bit closer here it appears that they are a serial port, so they're marked TX, RX, and ground. So a convenient point to connect uh, a serial 
device, I'd imagine. Flipping over, let's take a look here. So there is eight gigabytes of flash on board too, which is um, that chip, I believe. It's uh, branded 4C. And uh, there's a few other bits and pieces here as well. Uh, I'll do some close-ups of those chips so we can get uh, an ID on the, the chips, find out a little bit more about them. Got my various bits and pieces here. I've got a copy of Raspbian for the Orange Pi. I created this micro SD well when I ordered this uh, device, so a couple of weeks back now. I just said that it'd be ready here and waiting to boot up as soon as possible. And uh, yeah, it's just a 4 gig micro SD card just to give it an initial test and uh, imaged it using Win32 Disk Imager. The image itself was obtained from the orangepie.org website. Also got some um, networking here, a uh, little dongle to connect a wireless mouse and keyboard, a HDMI connection here to my monitor, the uh, USB to coaxial jack there and a uh, fairly beefy um, 2 amp or so 5 volt power supply so rec they recommend a couple of amps rating to the power supply for this thing so we'll, we'll use this guy and uh, hopefully that will work well so let me make the connections and let's see what we get okay moment of truth time uh, everything's hooked up got the micro SD card in the slot, got the HDMI connection there, network connection there. It's only um, 100 megabits per second uh, the connection to my router so we won't be able to test the full capability of this which I believe has uh, gigabit Ethernet and uh, of course the little dongle for mouse and keyboard there so let's plug in the uh, this little plug into the socket here and uh, with any luck it will boot. Mm. Gee that's kind of um, tough to insert but we got there and there's a light on there and uh, so far not much doing on my screen. Let's see if we can push a button and see whether that Causes it to leap into action or not. Okay, this calls for a bit of debugging. So what I've got here is an ASCII terminal and it's at 115.200 board and I've gone and connected it to that debug serial console connection on the Orange Pi. So I'll apply power and see if we get any output on the console because that'll tell us if it's just a problem with the HDMI connection or if it's uh, a completely non-responsive unit so I'll just plug this guy back in uh, 
Okay, so we do have the console being flooded with information here and it seems to have stopped. So that's promising, although there are all sorts of error messages there. But that's something at least, so it looks like there's maybe a problem connecting to the monitor, which is uh, via a HDMI to TVI cable. But um, yeah, it looks like there's, there's something there. Next thing I'll do is maybe see if my uh, router has um, picked up the fact that um, there's a device connected and has assigned it a, an address, an IP through DHCP and see if I can SSH into this Orange Pi. So I couldn't SSH into this device and I thought the next most prudent thing to do would be to flash another micro SD card with a newer copy of Raspbian for the Orange Pi. So I'd burnt this original micro SD on the 17th of May. Uh, picked one up, uh, the latest image last night, and um, burnt it to this 16 gigabyte card, so a bit larger, but um, yeah, good test. So let's plug the power in and see what happens with that. Kind of difficult once more on camera, but here we go. I'm getting all sorts of boot messages here that looks a lot like what you'd expect from a Linux distribution. And now we have a login. So this is encouraging. This suggests that we may indeed be able to SSH into this box now. So I'll go check with my router, try and discover its IP address and see if I can log into this machine. I've found the IP address for my Orange Pi by looking at my router and looking at the IP address that assigned to it through DHCP. So now if I SSH and the user is root, the super user, and then 192.168.103, that's the DHCP assigned IP address. It'll be different in your case. and now if I type the password of Orange Pi, you'll see I'm in. So it looks like we have success here. Linux Orange Pi 3.4.39. We can do uname hyphen A to see that same information again and check the Linux kernel version there. So that looks good. If I do a W, I can see that uh, I'm logged in. So just one user on the system and the load average, this is a little bit curious, it really is quite high for a machine that's just sitting there idle. What else could we do that's interesting? Well, we could cat uh, proc CPU info and uh, we can see here that we've got um, four cores available to us as we'd expect from this quad core um, processor. If I take a look at free, we can see how much free memory we have, and we're only using 100 megabytes of a total one gigabyte, so the one gigabyte promised is, is there, so that's a good sign. And if I do a df-h, we can look at the various file systems on this machine, and we can see here that we've got a 3.4 gigabyte uh, partition size of which 628 megabytes is available. So my micro SD card is actually 16 gigabytes and I'll need to do some kind of process to increase that partition size right up to use the full 16 gigabytes. But yeah, it's strange that the, the load average is so high on this machine, not quite sure what's happening. The other thing that we could run is 
D message. Always interesting to see what messages are coming out from the kernel. And I did notice this earlier too, that there is this um, issue with it being flooded with messages about the RTL 8188E um, or RTL 871X. I think that this is actually the chipset that's being used by the Wi-Fi adapter, but I'm not quite sure. But I did notice earlier that if I issued if down WLAN 0, those messages no longer accumulate. So you'll see there that uh, the last timestamp there is 1114. And now as I issue the message, we don't seem to get any more accumulating. So yeah, there's certainly a few odd things happening with this orange pie. Uh, lack of HDMI, uh, a high load there, high load average. And if I run top, you'll see that the CPU is um, really not doing much at all. Uh, and yet the load average is really high. So not quite sure what's going on there. But um, yeah, interesting bit of kit. Uh, do a couple more things. So if I go uh, LS USB, you can see what kind of uh, USB devices are connected to here. So one issue that was reported with an earlier version of the Orange Pi, not the Orange Pi Plus, was that not all four of the USB ports worked. So I'll just plug a little mouse and keyboard dongle sequentially into each port and let's do an LS USB. So it's plugged into the first port now and we can now see that there is the, the Logitech dongle has been detected. I'll unplug that from the first port, do an LS USB and it should be gone and I'll plug it into the second port LS USB, Logitech is detected so we know two of the USB ports work and I'll flip over to the other side of the device LS USB it's found it there so that's three of the ports working and I'll go LS USB now without it plugged in gone again and now I'll plug it into the fourth port so it seems to be finding that the Logitech adapter in on all four ports so that's good news that all those ports are working so yeah promising piece of kit uh, I think I'll leave it there and um, some issues to sort, sort out but hopefully they'll get resolved in coming releases of Raspbian for the Orange Pi and uh, you'll be able to do some useful computing with this thing So after reading some forums about issues people were having plugging into monitors, I thought I'd just try to plug into a television set where there'd be a HDMI to HDMI connection. So let's give that a go. I'll apply some power now. Okay, it's reporting stereo 720p. And all of a sudden, look at that, we have actually got the Orange Pi booted up and displaying on HDMI. So it seems to me that there's maybe some issues plugging into monitors or my particular monitor. But with my TV set here, uh, it's working fine.